I want to take this chance just to have this behind the scenes, yet yeah, in front of cameras, but behind the scenes sort of chat about some common leadership contradictions, all right, because we seem to be getting belt fed with those, and you know, we go to workshops, you know, do a lot of coaching, and we start mentioning these contradictions, you just get met with these like deer, deer in the headlights. So when you go, but they want the checklist. They want the tick box. It's like, if I do this, then leadership equals good. And it's like, <laughs> well, mm. yeah, but but no. All right. So there's some nuance in it. There's some nuance, right? There's some nuance in the language. There's some nuance in the delivery. And the context is different. The industry is different. Everything's different. It's that you've got to be cruel to be kind. It's like, well, what the hell does that mean? <laughs> like, where's the checklist? How do I make that work? It's like, ah, well, well, you don't. And so I think by getting us together and having a chat around some of those common contradictions, we might be able to shed a bit of light on it. And because we're all drinking whiskey, there'll be a less of a temptation to go down the consulting. Hey, we need just to, apple juice. Yeah, we, need to, we need to look at the cross-functional teams and multi engine bin that stuff and go, hey, this is the no bullshit. There are contradictions, right? Not every situation results from the same action has the same app so if we kick that off and have that chat i think we're going to land in a good place the one that i really want to start with is this idea that you've got to have conversations in confidence but you've got to be transparent and open in your communication it's like well, well they're, well, they're different things but you've got to do them at the same start it's like at the same time and it's like going well <clears throat> um we want to be authentic and open and genuine and always tell the truth, but yeah, stitches, <laughs> snitches get stitches, right? So if we frame that conversation, that would be a funny place to start, noting that we do some programs in prisons, which kind of helps as well. So <laughs> <laughs> what do you reckon? Snitches get stitches or are we open, honest and transparent all the time? I think you probably alluded to it just there in your intro, mm. depends on the situation, the context, mm. right? Because, you know, if we're involved in a company, running a company that's in financial hardship, do we just pass that on transparently to the employees? Mm. They start looking for other work. They're fearful for their own jobs. They run. So time and place matters, uh, context yeah. matters. And so if we just have that checklist, mm. that rule of thumb that we refer to, mm-hmm. Well, we're probably going to mismatch it at times mm-hmm. and we're probably going to have some pretty disastrous consequences off the back end of that. Well, what would what would the situation be? And, you know, knowing the backgrounds, military, there are times where you don't want to be open, honest and transparent in your communication because, say, the situation's going pear-shaped and in your brain you're like, Shit, 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 shit. I don't have a plan. The plan I have was wrong. I don't know what decision to make next. If you're open, honest, and transparent, well, your team's going to look at you like, oh, we're in trouble here. Yeah. All right. So. And then how confident are they to execute any of their tasks? Correct. Blissful ignorance goes along with it. It's better than nothing. I, to my mind, it's, it's kind of a, you're playing a game of tensions between Mm -hmm. individual relationship versus team responsibilities. Correct. There seems to be a play interplay between the two. Are you in this instance favoring the individual relationship and therefore valuing it higher Mm. proportionately compared to the team dynamic and the need for transparency? Now, if you go up to someone and they have a conversation with you and they 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 put a part of their soul into that conversation and a part of themselves in confidence and then you take that information and you walk into a communal environment or a group dynamic and you verbalize that you have by your actions set in play the destruction of trust I mean, it's the fastest way to destroy trust mm-hmm. and rapport. But Dave, you've been open and transparent. Oh, you've situation. been. <laughs> but but on that thread, right? So how many people have we met in our workshops um, that use honesty as a value system? 
Too many for it to be a coincidence. Right, right. It comes up all the time, right? It, it would probably be one of the top five terms mm -hmm. communicated in our workshops. And what you hear is this, I'm an honest person. It's like, okay, all right, fair enough. We all know, we, the collective we, the royal we, we all know our person mm -hmm. who purports to have that mentality where they, they just tell the truth and if anyone else can't deal with it, it's a... It's on them. And they leave this weight of oh, destruction a, in their path. This tsunami style <laughs> of destruction that just follows them wherever they go. Yeah. But then what happens, Dave, if they don't speak up and there's something really wrong? Hey, a fair point. But one might concede this is not a dichotomy. Mm. What if it's not this or that? Mm -hmm. It's a sliding scale. What if there's a something in the middle? And what if the something in the middle sounds like this? There's multiple ways to tell the same truth. Correct. And selectively picking parts of the truth that are resourceful to the outcome is far more valuable than a regurgitation of raw data. And it's still being honest, right? But And what you're doing, I mean, this is where you could bridge slightly <clears throat> into the game theory side, right? where you go, well, it's not where well, you said it's not one or the other. It's not It's not a zero-sum game. You can't, it doesn't mean it's either a closed-in conversation or it's open honest and transparent like it's not one or the other mm, we're like, playing iterative games it's like this context is not the hill we want to die on but we're going to favor the relationship over the instance so the instance might require a bit of holding back all of the truth but putting enough of the truth forward to continue on with the relationship but holding the rest to value the organisation as a whole. So, so you mentioned the military before, right? And then mm. this is a good example because it's it's pretty out there on the cusp of things mm -hmm. for a contact situation. I almost wonder, mm. you mentored and trained that Afghan National Army mm -hmm. and you were probably privy to far more information than they were at certain times mm -hmm. and on certain patrols. Mm -hmm. How did that manifest on the ground? And then I might try and have a go at bridging that into a corporate environment. Mm -hmm. Well, it's interesting. We couldn't pass on every little bit of information that we had, specifically uh, in the team that I had. Um, you might know the situation two and a half months before I went into country. I took over the patrol base that had had an Afghan officer kill some Australian soldiers. Yeah. All right. That was, um, <clears throat> wasn't a great place to hand over. So we couldn't be open and honest and transparent completely with the information we had because there was that insider threat. If we gave them too much information, too far out, then that might have leaked into the Taliban and they would have known our plans before we had them. But we and that, still had that to probably had pretty disastrous consequences, right? Yeah, well, it didn't allow them to do, a, a, didn't allow them to have that longer spate of planning, but we would be able to give them enough information that would set them on a path to planning but without the fidelity of the information to show exactly what assets we had, exactly the routes we were going to take, exactly how many of us were going to be on the ground. All right. So there was just, it was like, yeah, look, we trust you, but we've got insurance. It was more that. It, there's, a, there's, a, there's, a, there's an element to this that I think needs extrapolation. Mm -hmm. We all know those individuals that you send them an email down the chain mm -hmm. and they on-forward the email. Correct. No analysis. For your information. Go. Yeah, for your information, right? They, there's no analysis at all. Mm -hmm. No context. No context. No, no, no uh, situation. Yeah, yeah. No expansion on the concept and no mm -hmm. amplification on the context at that level. So say you're moving from strategic to mm -hmm. operational, operational to tactics. No translation. Language is different. <laughs> the, the priorities are different. The individuals are different. The characters are different. The, the ego. The expectations are different. <clears throat> and the individual that places themselves in the middle and then just regurgitates down. Now, if they were using honesty as a value system, 100% smack on. I'm being 100% transparent. Mm. I'm as transparent as any human has ever been. As soon as it comes from the top, I'm dragging it down to the mm. bottom and I'm vomiting it out. But you haven't done anything. No. How you haven't worked. You haven't solved any <clears throat> problems at your level. 
And so to that point before, it's like there's multiple ways to tell the same truth. It's like, well, what information is relevant and resourceful and helpful? Mm-hmm. And what's noise? That's a different question. Mm. But, but it's not, not also what's relevant and what's noise. What's going to cause a stir? Yeah. For un- no. for un- for no- so what they're, make they're important. The horse bolt. Yeah. Out of the stable. Is it stirring for stirring's sake or is it stirring for testing? Is it stirring for um, pressure testing? Mm. What is it? Why are you stirring? Because if you're going to move information f- via you, you never want to be predictable to the point of irrelevancy. Mm. There's no, that's a terrible place to be. And, and the, the fast track to do that is to just send whatever you get to the next person because what you're a mailbox. Mm. And we've all had that boss. We've all had that boss. Where they're in the middle and they just hop out of the way and let the, someone just takes the impact. The huge ball roll, roll straight past them, straight into the team. Do you think, all right, and this is one of those, if we were talking to inexperienced leaders or leaders that aren't confident in their own abilities, do you think that especially new into the position, they don't have the we'll call it analytical ability or the confidence or the understanding of that strategic plan. Like he's an operations person, right? They're getting like a vice. They're getting crushed between both. They've just come out of the tactical into operations. So they haven't quite separated from being on the tool. So in the operational environment, they're still friends. Yeah, they're still potentially close. They get fed some strategic information. They don't know how to understand it extrapolate, pull it apart to what is relevant from an operational context for their lateral team, but then go, you know, I just want to be open and honest with my team, boom. It also gives them a bit of separation from the plan. They can still turn around and be like, oh, this is the idea of the board or this is the idea (laughs) of the C-suite. You know, we've just got to do it. Making a common enemy. Right. So they're not taking ownership of the plan, telling the truth in a way that, is both functional and orientated to the level that they're speaking to. And maybe they just don't have the skills and understanding how to do that. And they're worried, like what we've talked about, of you know not representing, not so much not representing their teams, but like they're going jack by being in that position in the first place. They're like, well, I'm still one of the still one of the lads. I'm letting them down by taking that position up. It's like, well, hang on. If you're competent and you're understanding, then it's your job to get up there and be the buffer to be able to understand, to be able to mm. filter the noise because if the strategic language is coming down and you're stepping to the side, what are you doing with the consequences? What are you doing with the risk? What are you doing with all the negative stuff? You're stepping outside and now your team's wearing it. Because Someone's taken the hit. Because you haven't done the work to understand it. And it's too easy. It is way too easy to sit there you know, read the CEO's strategic intent or look at the board's strategic intent and be like, them, 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 they, they. Hey, look, we've just got to do it because they said so. But it's like, you're not helping them. Mm. And in the most dangerous situation, we create a divide, mm. right? Correct. Hey, we've got this ivory tower up here. Mm-hmm. Oh, roll the eyes. These guys have told us to do X, Y, and Z. Mm. We've just got to do it, team. Mm. We're still trying to be part of the tactical team. And we're not putting any emphasis or spin or relevating, mm. making it relevant back to the importance of business, the structure, the progression forward. The short term. Yeah. Well, short term thinking. I, 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 I can't remember who said the quote, but it goes, leaders who do not listen will eventually be surrounded yeah. by people who have nothing to say. Mm-hmm. Well, the same applies for rapport and confidentiality. Mm-hmm. Now, if one person hears of person, a, a person two having talked to a leader mm. and their confidentiality being blasted, do you think that behavior has been rewarded to be repeated? Mm-mm. People are going to wake up with a message. So then you, you find yourself as a leader in this situation where you have no senses. Mm-hmm. Not senses as in Got senses it. or senses, but sensors. Sensors. Mm. You, you, you can't detect what's going out on at the ground, particularly at the lower levels, Mm -hmm. because you only get a few moments that matter. Mm -hmm. And if you betray those moments, you lose your influence via your lack of sensor Mm -hmm. um, uh, networking. You you don't have the ability to 
figure out what's going on. And therefore, as we just identified the value of being able to filter information so that it's relevant and extrapolated at the right level, well, conversely, going back up, this one. you're also redundant because you don't have any sensors yeah. or detection mechanisms to find out whether the strategy is being implemented at the tactical level because people don't come to you because they don't trust you. Mm. Up you, and down. Up but, and down. And now you're you're the definition of irrelevant. You get boxed. But there's, there's a part two to this, right? Mm. So if you take all of those sensors and those complaints from the tactical level, from the guys at the coalface and the ground. Don't filter it up. And don't filter it on the way back up. Now they're going to think of you as irrelevant mm. because you've not been able to be concise, mm. identify the key issues or the key problems mm. and solutions or potential solutions to solve those. Well, you're not linking it to the strategic I, pillars. You don't, you don't link it. You, <laughs> there's no options. It's, like, it's, it's just like, oh, I'm just a conduit. Yeah to pass information from this level to this level yeah. without filtering it back up the chain. So filters it's like work that both movie, ways. Office Space. <laughs> it's where if you've seen Office Space, tell me you've seen it. Oh, yes. my God, I hope someone has seen it. Mm. Right? And someone this, in the world <laughs> has seen it. He said, oh, my God, he's one of the best movies of all time. Anyway, he uh, these two consultants come in to, you know, this IT company, and it's it's over, overtly obvious that they're here to do to try and discern who's going to stay in and out of the business. And they're, they're finding redundancies. And, they, you know, there's this poor dude who's, like, positioned himself as the person who takes the engineering documents oh, and hands yeah, them to yeah, the yeah, person, cool. you know, who, yeah. on, uh, you know, on pushes their documents. And they're like, well, why don't the engineers just take the documents to the person? He's like, well, because well, they're not people. They're, you know, they're not, they're not, they're not <laughs> good people. with people. And he's like, I'm a people person. And it's evident by his nature that this guy is not particularly good people because he's freaking out as he's saying people person. And he starts wearing himself up, you know, and then they, they eventually get to the point where they say, what is it you do here? Boom. And he just freaks out because he's obviously attacked his relevance and his competence. Well, the same could be said if you were to anchor it to, the, to this discussion about, you know, transparency at all costs mm. or confidentiality. It's mm. like, well, what do you do here? As a leader, That's you're a buffer on both of those ends. Mm. You don't sell out on either. That's a rule. Yeah. Don't sell out. Correct. Right? Because that's an easy – that might look like a, a really good short-term win, but it's going to cost you long-term. So you're talking about multiple plays. Mm -hmm. But conversely, you don't favor one or the other. Mm -hmm. Most things on any spectrum, if you push too far down either end, it becomes unbalanced and becomes untethered. If you're the fully transparent, I just tell anyone anything. Yeah, well, good luck to you. Mm -hmm. But also if you're the you're the squirrel and everything's a vault, it's mm -hmm. like, okay. Um, yeah, I think you're also the person where you might have lots of information. Mm -hmm. It's also very Machiavellian mm -hmm. if you want to Correct. go down the dark triad. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, traits. You're playing the courtier's game. Yeah, you're playing the courtier's game until, you know, it's Louis the Fourteenth court sort of <laughs> play there. there yeah, head. be very Everyone careful too to because eventually, you know, it mm. leads to a witch, and, witch hunt mentality and a witch and hunt always feels a witch. And, yeah. And I think what we're talking about is ownership. Ownership at that level as to, right, I've got some competence and experience in this level and at this rank for this period of time, this is relevant. Mm. This isn't relevant. This is noise. Mm -hmm. And you're that discerning filtering layer. And without that ownership, well, you're more likely to pick some of those extremes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's, a, it's not expedient or... over what is correct. <laughs> and I think it, when you said before, it, it triggered a bit where you go, well, it depends. And unfortunately, it's that time and experience in that position or in that niche or in that environment, especially if you haven't been keeping your eyes open, right? Because you can, especially from the tactical to operations, well, you can see what works and what doesn't. You look up, right? You might not have exposure to the strategic room, what works in behind those closed doors. Yeah, fair enough. I get that. But the time and place argument is as real now as it ever was. And people who are looking at it from a one-size-fits-all, it's like, well, just always, always those conversations closed, you know, hold everything to close to your chest or those looking at, well, just open honesty all the time. Also, hang on, 
What are you signing yourself up for? If you're not willing to voluntarily step, step into an area where you are uncomfortable and learn the nuance, then you're signing yourself up to be blindsided by either the strategic coming down because you're not trusted to filter the information or you lose those ties and those connections. Those senses. Those senses from the bottom. They ain't coming back. Well, they're not coming back. If you can't protect and filter their information, learn how to tell the truth effectively, right? you don't get those senses anymore. They don't trust you. Well, and if you get either of those situations wrong, mm. you lose your relevance mm-hmm. in your rank and right. you lose the trust of one mm-hmm. or both parties. Right. So what's the advice you reckon? Say for new, for new people or new people coming into that leadership, especially go, I think the... The most common issues that we're facing at the moment with coaching and that is people coming from the tactical up to the operations because it's learning a new language, being the strategic language. It's trying to understand in detail the operational language, which is more systems, processes, crisis, chaos, those sort of things, and trying to separate from the tactical without being a jerk. Right? We've seen it go wrong where people go, you're in this position now. <coughs> complete divide and what advice do we give them and How losing them losing sight of bau yeah. or business as usual right yeah. you know one crisis that occurs at strategic level mm. can derail the whole mm. tactical team yeah. if we mm. let that filter go straight through mm-hmm. um i have always found success in having really robust closed door conversations mm-hmm. one-on-one with the leadership so not going back and going oh this is all mm-hmm. Messed up. This is a big issue. Come with a solution, not just a problem. Yeah, not just that, mm. but also, you know, let's say Dave's my one up. Dave, what on earth is going on here? Give me more context. I can't understand this. We're seeing this pain on the ground. You know, this is an issue. This is an issue. This Ex- is an issue. Exploration of accusations. Yeah. That's a yeah. good I, we, We're getting this budgetary constraint. We're getting these time pressure constraints, whatever the case is. What's driving this? What's going on here? Why has this come down? What can you all give me so that I can go back to the team? Yeah, yeah. and and it's all closed door, right? Because yeah. I'm just going to Dave. Mm-hmm. I'm what, not going to and what you, Dave and, and, and the team. And what are you confident with with me passing on to the team? Yeah. That's, a, that's all, key, almost an agreement. Yeah. What are the key messages? Yeah. Right? What are the aligned message? Of what shows unity? Which are level? true. Which are true. Right. I think that's that's a kicker. What are the priorities, right? What are we willing to give up to get what we want? If this is a crisis at the strategic level, is it a crisis at the operational level? Hey, I'll put it out there too. There is a time when you as the individual might have to take an impact for someone take else's hit. decision. Mm-hmm. God forbid. I've got them this okay, So say you're <laughs> at the operational level and there's a strategic key messaging, Mm. you know that that's not necessarily going to land at the tactical Mm. level despite how you sugarcoat it, Mm. despite how you, um, you know, uh, adjust the information to suit and you go, I'm going to do it to the best, to the best of my ability and the best it can be done Mm. as far as I'm aware. And you know that that's still going to get friction and tension and when because you've had those private discussions with the strategic leadership Mm -hmm. and now at the operational, you're like, I'm going to, I'm going to pass this down, but it's a 70% solution. They're going to agree with some of it, but not all of it. Mm -hmm. And what they don't agree with, they're not going to like. All right. You can frame it. You can frame, you can frame it that way, but you need to be ready to go bang. When, when, when it comes back off the tactical front line Mm -hmm. and you take that impact, it's not to go, yeah, but they, they said, you don't do that, you know, sell out mm. because then you can still retain the credibility mm. of your sensor network via the rapport delivered through those closed door discussions. And conversely, the same applies at the strategic level, but there's got to be a price. The price is a massive impact to your shoulder and a dent in your shield. Okay? But it builds your reputation. But it builds your reputation level. as someone who doesn't sell out. Yeah. And that's ownership. Yeah. That's ownership of that rank going, hey, this problem, I've not created it. Yeah. I've not manifested this, but it's my problem now. But I'm going to look down like range. I'm a part of it and yeah. take some of the friction. Well, yeah. you're also acknowledging that if you're part of it and your actions have some impact or some, you know, has some sort of influence on the outcome, 
that you have relevance in being in your position. Because if you victim out, <laughs> right, as in victim mindset, not victim of a violent crime, victim mindset, if you're they, 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 them, 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 I have, there's nothing I can do in this situation. You wash your hands. You wash your hands of it. Then what are you doing there? Mm. Right? If you have no impact on the outcome, why are you there? If you can't mitigate and communicate doubt, if you can't influence and shape up, why are you in that position to start with? So I think from the advice perspective, if you were to help new leaders, you go approach problems with exploration of it accusation you take ownership over the issue and you figure out the way to tell the truth right that is relevant to the situation the elements of truth that are relevant for them to move right? forward at each at each level that you're communicating so it's ta- if it's tactical truth it's down and if, if it goes wrong right, you're willing right? to protect be prepared to take the hit it might not it'll hurt right it'll suck but it's infinitely better than becoming the person that shirks it and blames other people because if you're the person that scapegoats, everyone's just wondering who you're going to scapegoat next. And then they're not going to help you out. Ain't no favours coming your way. Or, or they're going to walk. Or they're going to walk. All right. All right. I think that's, right. A, that's a good way to wrap that little bad boy up. All right. Bad. Good hustle. Cheers. <laughs>